What's up everyone and welcome back to another video here on the Murphy Photography and Film YouTube channel. Today we have such a very interesting topic that I'm willing to share with you. This week uh, the photography community literally got dropped a huge bomb of editing software through the new Photoshop uh, AI. Specifically this is the a AI generator where uh, it can do content fill, it can do uh, different types of you know sky replacement and so forth. What is so crazy about this type of software is how accurate it is and how uh, some, I, I think some photographers actually is probably going to think that it's actually going to, you know, hurt them more than help them. But I'm 50-50 on it. I've only used it one time on one photo and that whole uh, uh, photo is actually posted on my Facebook page and along with my Instagram. And if you guys want to check out those posts right now, you can, you can, uh, click the link in the description below but this is really amazing i'll be completely honest with you i am uh fascinated by ai generation just because of the data points that it'll get from it and it'll actually create a full image um, i think there's a place where you can actually like be creative within that own mindset and you can still get amazing images uh, when you abuse it it'll actually you know the genuine you know authentic you know um moment you may lose that so um this is my initial thought what we're going to do is we're actually going to uh, be using four different photos uh one of them i've, I've already generated so i kind of like see what it looks like and uh, the other ones is going to be completely brand new so a little bit about this is this is the photoshop beta uh, you can actually get this in the cloud store um, it's free is as long as you have an Adobe account, you install it and, um, the rest is history. Um, when you create the content fill and I'll show you how to do that here, um, in, in a few moments, it will actually give you three different options. So if you don't like the first one, it'll give you three generated ones, which I think is even more mind blowing because, um, it has put all that data points in together. So let's hop right into our first image and see what we can create. And then at the end, let's talk about pros and cons, what we've learned and, um, go from there. All right, guys. So all right, guys, so this is the first image that we have here. This is a beautiful uh, couple. This is Courtney and Faith. Uh, I shot them last year in Hawaii, and um, I thought this would be a perfect example. So they're splashing, and we have all this, uh, um, you know, water. They're barefoot. You got some trees. There's some data here, but overall, what if I wanted to make this a wider shot? What if I wanted to use this for my website, uh, or what if I just wanted uh, to get a different angle? So this is how you would do it. Um, so once you, I haven't done anything other than put the photo in, uh, what you, this is how I've been doing it is you go to crop, you see how big you want to make it. Let's say we want to go like right there. And then you have this white space. You hit, uh, the check mark to go ahead and, uh, go ahead and make that your crop. So now you have your original image. Now your whole photo is going to be the size of right here as well. So, um, then you go to so you can a lot of people has been using the lasso tool or they've been using the red um, like marquee tool i think in this case might be a little bit better so you just want to highlight this whole white right here and then what it, i'm actually just going to do is generate a fill so what i want to do is click that you hit agree and then let's just type beach and we hit generate and let's see what happens um, usually it doesn't take very long, just about probably under 10 seconds to generate three different, um, examples. And I always get excited because this is like the moment of the truth to see whether or not it's going to work or not. But <laughs> this is insane. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, bro. Are you kidding me? That looks incredible. I'm speechless. This is this is actually insane. It took all the data that was originally in it and made it into his own. That's incredible. And that's the first one. Let's let's check out the, the other two. Bro, 
That looks amazing too. Whoa! <laughs> oh my gosh! So obviously it took all of her data that was right here and it made one so that one doesn't work. But two out of three, I mean, that's incredible. That is absolutely incredible. So I feel like in a situation like this, especially uh, for instance, that um, if you there's a lot of people in the background or, you know, it's a... Uh, 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 you know, a dog or something like that. Like you could do this and the background could be potentially completely edited for you and stuff. And I love negative space. So, you know, in a way that we can like be a little bit more creative in, in ways like this is good. Now, I will have to say there is some photographers that don't agree with this because um, they want their, um, you know, images to be as, you know, authentic as possible. And I totally agree with that. I, I do. I don't think this changes um, the couple's mindset about their pictures, but it could just give them a different opportunity. In my mindset, it opens up more of a branding and marketing opportunity for graphic designers, for, um, you know, different ways to market yourself. Because what you could do now is you could use all this negative space right here for a graphic. And honestly, this might be the thumbnail for this video is this right here. And I'll just say this thumbnail was completely generated by AI incredible uh so let's move on we have this photo right here another wedding photo and what we want to do is say that we want to replace this whole entire skyline here with just a different scenery so we're going to do the same thing except we're not doing a crop because we just want to change the sky so in this, in this case i'm actually going to do i might do that actually i'm not going to do that let's do Let's do space aware here and it should pull. Yeah, so it's pulling that, but I want to get rid of these two. So what if I click that, see if we can add that and then quick selection. And what we want to do is we want to add all this up. We got to make this brush a little bit bigger. Okay, yeah, let's just add this whole entire scenery here. Oh no, undo. So you just gotta be careful with it a little bit. So we got that. So now let's go back to this, generate fill, and then let's say mountains at golden hour. And let's see what, let's see what creates right here. Let's see if we can put them in a more of a less urban situation and more of a, um, rural like mountain like montana or okay not bad i don't personally like this one this is giving me like arizona vibes so let's look at another one interesting okay so you can see like some of the details on this and stuff it, it, it becomes more of the ai but the the bokeh effect that is doing like on the foreground here like is very is very good like it looks very real this doesn't look real to me at all, so switch. Uh, and that one's just not good and stuff, too. So what you can, can do, uh, if you don't like any of those three options, you just hit generate again with the same prompt, and I'll go ahead and prompt those out and stuff. But this is such a cool feature. I'm blown away by the beach photo, by the way. Uh, that is something that I just, I just can't wrap my head around how awesome it is. Okay, so now it's getting more of those mountain prompts. Still don't like this one. Don't like that one. This one's, I mean, it's probably going to be the closest you get and stuff. Okay, so what if we change the prompt, right? Let's do um, a city scene. City skyline. Generate. I see what this one looks like. This is, this is truly amazing. And it's a very fast feature, too. So I think on... Okay, so we got some city stuff. A um, little bit. Yeah. Was that New York? I think that's New York. And then back to mountains. So this is one that I just wouldn't, I don't think I would use. I just don't, nothing's like working for me and stuff. So I'm just going to exit out that one and stuff. Still this one, this is my blowing. I think this one worked perfectly. Um, okay, so now I have this photo here. So same thing. I want to select. Um, I just want to select her. 
And what I want to do is I want to put her in a field. Okay. So I am going to inverse this that way. It's all good. Generate field and put field at golden hour. Generate. All right. This is by what, by the way, this, uh, her name's Carrie. I actually shot with her a couple times. Super, super model. Um, all my photos I get with her is very awesome. So I'm very curious. This is one of the only ones too that we did an invert. Okay. So now she's in a field. I mean, they really put her in a field. Okay. <laughs> this, this, this looks like something that is Photoshopped, right? Like this looks fake. So it doesn't work all the time. It's very interesting. So let's say tall grass in a field um, at golden hour. Let's see what we can do with that. Change the grass a little bit. I do think the more you use this, I think you'll get better at like what the prompts is going to be. But overall, the same kind of concept. Okay. Okay. So I could actually see myself like kind of like taking some type of photo like that. Uh, that was iffy. There you go. So we it got the tall grass put in there. Not too bad. So this is the original image. Okay. Um, and then this is, this is the AI generated one. So let's look at the detail on this real quick. And I mean, the merge of it is pretty, pretty spotless is nice. I mean, her hands kind of like off right here and stuff too, because it didn't like pull. But I mean, this is just a quick example, of course. But I mean, that is super cool. And then I think you put like some type of filter on it, um, and then you'll be good to go. But I mean, that that looks like it could be natural and stuff. Um, okay, cool. So just moving along. Uh, no, we have this one. So this is the one that I posted on. Oh no, my, my camera. Okay, so, okay. okay, so this is one of the photos that I actually posted on my Facebook and my Instagram, and the mountains was there. So we're going to do it one more time, and what we're going to do is we're going to select that. It should choose the sky. Perfect. And then we're going to put mountains at golden hour. Now, the first time I did this, it did one that was seamless, like seamless. And the more times you do it, you'll understand that there's not going to be uh, the same one every time. Uh, that's just the way AI works. So we have this one, you know, it's okay. Bro, that's, that's, could be realistic, you know, like I would take this out. Yeah, that's. That looks real. That looks real. And to give, give you kind of a comparison. This one right here is the one that I chose to post on my Facebook. Um, so we have right here is the original. Here's the one that we just did. And there's the one that we posted. I mean, the light source looks perfect. That looks the, the same amount of depth of field. I mean, this is incredible to say, yeah, that sky right there is completely AI generated. So I think it's just like something to really look into and understand that how amazing of a, of a tool that we have in front of us. So, um, let me so 
What do you guys think? Do you guys think this is a pro or a con in the photography world? As a photographer, what do you think that this is going to create? Is it going to make you more creative? Is it going to you know limit some of the things that you can do? I know with a lot of digital art, a lot of photographers um, are already feel like they are getting pushed out of it. However, I don't think this could be a crutch. I think this could really be something to be uh, creative and it could give your clients a little bit more of an understanding of what the editing process is and what type of content and uh, photos they are actually getting. So if you guys haven't already, please like and subscribe and we'll see you in the next one. Thank you so much for supporting Murphy Photography and Film and have a great day.